Do you need help protecting your finances as you enter retirement? David Dickens of KC Financial Advisors has got you covered. Welcome to the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. Walter Storholt here alongside David Dickens, President and Wealth Advisor at KC Financial Advisors with an office in Overland Park. Find us online at CoverYourAssetsKC.com. David, great to be with you this week. What's going on in your world? Well, so uh, we're recording this the, the uh, on Monday of the Final Four. And so, yeah, it's been a pretty fun weekend. Those were some pretty awesome games on Saturday. And I will say, Walter, that in my family bracket, my family pool, okay, I am poised to win the whole thing. Is that right? Does it come down to tonight, to the final night? It does. Oh, okay. So I am in a family with a whole lot of Baylor Bears. And almost to a person, they picked Baylor to win the whole thing. <laughs> As they should, right? As they should. I mean, good for them. And I, on the other hand, picked Baylor to lose in the final to Georgetown. I mean, to, uh, to Gonzaga. Their Bulldogs look almost identical. And, and honestly, to you, it doesn't matter as long as Baylor loses. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care who shows up on the other team as long as they win, right? <laughs> exactly. So it's gonna, I think it's going to be a super fun game. And we're going to talk a little bit about, I mean, our, our topic for today is around basketball. And so, uh, you know, this ought to be a fun podcast and hopefully a real yep. fun game tonight. Even if you haven't watched much of the March Madness and uh, the games and didn't do a bracket and all that stuff, you can still listen to today's show. It's not a prerequisite to have watched <laughs> all of the games. So, And also, at this point, our listeners will know if David is pleased and won his family bracket or is displeased if, the, if Baylor has won uh, by, the, by the end of tonight or people will be listening to this after, after Thursday. So we'll be a few days removed from the final. But uh, yeah, it'll be, uh, be kind of fun knowledge for the listener to know if you are, are currently now in a good mood or slightly bad mood from the loss, David. But we'll have to see. So basketball, obviously, on a lot of people's minds this time of year. So what can we learn about retirement planning from some of the concepts in the game of basketball? That's our fun analogy for the day. All right, so we have this thing called the shot clock. David, you know, I think most people can understand this concept pretty well. It varies a little bit, um, you know, whether you're talking about NBA versus college versus high schools and different levels of basketball. But essentially, the game forces you to put up a shot at some point in time during when you have the ball. They put you on the clock. They, Unlike baseball, where the pitcher can sit out there on the mound with the ball forever um, and not have to pitch the ball for a really <laughs> long period of time. Basketball, they make you get down the court and put up a shot to keep the game moving so that one team can't just, you know, ball hog and run out the clock and have a 2-0 to zero victory or something like that. Uh, what is the financial equivalent of the shot clock? You know, it just occurred to me as you were saying that, Walter, there are a bunch of our listeners that might not know that you didn't, there didn't used to be a shot clock. That's true. So when I was in college, I, I went to uh, college from 76 to 80. And during my time in college, there was no shot clock. So I sat through some games where uh, the other team would hold the ball uh, and the halftime score would be eight to four. Right. Uh, I, but, you, you know, I went to school at the University of North Carolina and Dean Smith, famous coach uh, at the time, was famous for, um, you know, the four corners where that yeah. was pretty much the strategy. You'd get the lead like, and go away. into lockdown mode. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, now that now, uh, so everybody knows now there is a shot clock and a, a couple of uh, analogies that you might make to that. One is th like things that you have to do when you're kind of on the clock, retirement type decisions that you have to make under a certain particular time frame. So for instance, an early retirement buyout package. A lot of uh, my, uh, we have some clients from, that used to work at Sprint here in Kansas City. And so that's kind of the thing that came to mind for me was you're being offered an early retirement buyout. The question is, do you take it or do you keep working at the company and maybe wait out retirement or wait for the next best deal? So I've had a number of clients that I've helped uh, answer that question for themselves. And I, I will say that I have some who are super excited about the decision they made and others that <laughs> kind of wish maybe they'd kept working because they really did like their job. And now they're either gainfully unemployed and you know, reasonably happy in retirement, or they actually went back and found another piece of work. But the question you really need to ask yourself is, is the retirement package going to get me all the way to retirement? Or is it really gonna be a bridge to take me to my next stop 
a next job because I'm not really either interested in retiring or I'm not able to retire because I haven't saved enough. Um, another question that, that I help these folks with is, well, so if I take that buyout package and maybe become, become a consultant somewhere, I'm going to have to get my own health insurance. And that's going to come with a cost and some hassle. So, you know, that's, that's uh, certainly some of the questions that that, that type of um, decision would bring up. And then another one, a kind of a shot clock type question is, you're retiring soon, maybe you're 65 or 66, and you just haven't done all the planning that you wished you had done. Well, you let the, you let the shot clock run out on you. Everybody has the picture in their mind of, you know, you've got your 30 seconds and all of a sudden you're down to five and nobody's open and you got to take a bad shot. Well, what you don't want to do is get to be 63, 64, 66, and all of a sudden it's time to retire and you really don't have a plan. And so that's where making sure that early in the shot clock, let's just say in your late 50s, when you've still got five or six or seven years to go to retirement, you answer these key questions like, well, how much do I need? When am I going to need it by? And for how long is it going to have to last once I actually retire? So those were just uh, those were a couple of things that came to mind when you mentioned shot clock. You just don't want to get down to the end and not really have an answer that's fit for you, and you throw up a, a silly answer that you regret later. It's a great point. I love it. And uh, yeah, don't wait too late in the shot clock to pull the trigger on your decisions. We kind of saw that in, uh, not to get too into some of the individual games, but that really good, if anybody watched it, the UCLA versus Gonzaga Final Four game was <laughs> awesome. What a game. But UCLA did just this, right, on their last possession with a chance to win it. They just took forever to start the play and then ran out of time and end up having a foul on themselves as time expired and had to go to overtime and then lost. And, uh, yeah, that shot clock, they didn't handle the time appropriately and needed to make their decision sooner, and boom, got in trouble. So Yeah, usually pressure right at the end when, yep. when time is of the essence can make you make a bad decision. So the more time you can give yourself, usually the better off you're going to be. Love it. All right, this next one is a uh, a good one. We can all remember maybe back to when, if you ever have dribbled a basketball, and when you first learn how to dribble a basketball, or have ever tried to teach someone for the first time how to dribble a basketball, the double dribble, uh, either dribbling with both hands or you pick up your dribble, so you're bouncing the ball, and then you pick up the ball and stop dribbling. You're not allowed to restart dribbling without passing it or giving it to somebody else. So this gets people into trouble all the time, even in the pros, not just a beginner in basketball. Uh, they pick up that dribble. All of a sudden, your options are very limited what you can do because you're now kind of frozen in place, so to speak, and you need some help. I know you can probably draw lots of good financial comparisons to this. Yeah, so I'm going to draw two since we're trying to do all of these podcasts in you know, 15 to 20 minutes and give them bite-sized pieces. But a couple things came to mind on that. So you don't really get – the things that you don't get do-overs on, I guess, is, is what we're really talking about here. So when you start Social Security is an important decision for a lot of people. And it can make sense, it can make a lot of sense to wait until you're 70, which is the longest time it makes any sense. After 70, there's no benefit from waiting. You can start as early as 62, but you take a lot less money. And your full retirement age is based on your age, but it's somewhere between 66 and 67. And so what I wanna mention here are a couple, we've, we've done podcasts on why it makes sense to delay that decision because you get more money. But there are some good reasons to start early or at a minimum at your full retirement age. One would be if you're in poor health. So Social Security is built to be actuarially sound in that if you live to basically your, your life expectancy, then whether you started early and got a lesser amount for more years, or you started later getting Social Security and you got a bigger amount for fewer years, you should end up in about the same place if you don't exceed your life expectancy. So if you're in poor health, you're unlikely to live as long as your life expectancy, and that's a good reason to start Social Security early. Another is if you get, maybe you got kicked out of your job and you weren't able to get another one and you actually need the money early. So instead of spending down the other assets that you have, there might be a good reason for you 
your spouse, or maybe both of you to start Social Security early. Once you make that decision, uh, you really need to feel good about it. So that's where you might want to get a little bit of consulting to say, what happens if I start early and am I going to, um, am I going to goof up my long-term plan or will it actually improve my long-term plan by starting early? Another one, uh, one that you, you absolutely can't do a do-over on is, uh, let's say that you have a pension at your work and you've started to explore uh, options for your spouse. So the, they usually get two or three or four different options regarding whether you want a spousal continuation on that. In other words, you start taking your pension at 65 and you die at 70. Does your spouse continue to get all of that money, 75% of that money, 50% of that money, or none of that money? And depending on the choice you make, you either get more every month while you're living or less. Well, there are really good reasons for each of those choices, you just need to make sure that it's a fit for you and your family and your situation. So if you've, if you've, maybe you've saved a ton of money and the pension really is inconsequential to how your spouse will live out his or her days, uh, then maybe you, you make a different decision than if the pension is a big part of your retirement income and you absolutely want that spouse of yours to have that pension income after you're gone. So those are kind of the basic parameters as to what you would do as far as the spousal benefit on a pension. But that's absolutely one that would be a, a financial uh, retirement double dribble. Uh, once you pick up that dribble, once you make that choice, you own that choice uh, for the rest of your life. That's very true. And we I wish it wasn't that way. And the good news is there are a lot of things in the financial world that can be unwound, that can be do-overs, or at least a different direction chosen if you don't end up liking the one direction that you picked originally. But there are some decisions where, like that double dribble in basketball, you really can't take that second dribble. You can't go again. You've got to kind of stick with your choice and make a decision from there and move forward. You can't go back at all. So that's a really important one to kind of just understand that lesson does exist in the financial world too. All right, last but not least, David, in basketball, we have this thing called a personal foul. And when you commit a foul, it isn't the end of the world, uh, just part of the game. Um, so getting a f call for a foul or two isn't a big deal. But in no matter what realm of basketball you're playing in, unless it's, uh, you know, just street basketball with the buddies uh, at the park or something like that, uh, you're going to be disqualified from the game when you commit too many fouls. Where's the financial comparison? So uh, I can think of a couple of different ones. One is... Th th this was always you... my problem in basketball, by the way, David. I loved basketball. <laughs> I wasn't bad, but I fouled a lot, yeah. They called you the hacker. I was, I, I'm a bit of a hacker. <laughs> I play some pretty rough defense. <laughs> <laughs> so what you would know is that if you get a couple of fouls early in the game, what's the coach going to do? Yeah, I, I, you got to go sit down because you, you can't afford down. for you to keep picking them up. Exactly. You don't want to have the third foul before halftime. So you're going to be riding the pine for the better part of the first half, and your team probably needs you out there, and so you're not going to be scoring any points. You're not going to be playing any good defense. The financial analogy there is that if you have losses in your portfolio, big, bigger type losses early in retirement, there's a if you Google the term sequence of returns, you're going to find some really good studies that will tell you that early in retirement, it's really important to avoid big losses because all of a sudden, so when you're still working, you're putting money into your accounts and your dollar cost averaging, you're buying during those big downturns. But when you're retired, you're effectively reverse dollar cost averaging. You're taking money out. And when the market's going down, you're, it causes you to sell stocks low. And what you want to do is buy low and sell high. So that's the first thing that I thought of is that early fouls, early losses in retirement can cause you to run out of money before you're gone. And that's obviously not a good thing. Another thing that came to mind on that was, all right, well, you, everybody's going to have investments that don't do particularly well. Some of my clients are not very accurate at predicting what they're going to spend in retirement. Both of them, maybe they spend more on travel. Or they decided, you know what, I'm not going to downsize my house. That's just not a huge deal. Unless you start racking up those problems 
one after another, and then it can become a big deal. So what I would say there is you really don't need to sweat small mistakes, but what you do want to do is avoid silly fouls. So silly fouls would be racking up credit card debt. You're, you're living above your means and you're borrowing at very high interest rates to do that. Another silly foul, especially for our millennial listeners, is not saving 10% of what you make. And the third one, also for our younger listeners, is not starting to save for yourself early enough. So I've used this example in, in a prior podcast, but let's just say you're going to save 500 bucks a month and it's going to earn about 7% a year forever. So you're saving $6,000 a year. If you start that at age 25, you're going to end up with a million three. If you start at age 35, you're going to end up with 610,000. If you start at age 45, you're going to end up with 260,000. Million three if you start early, 260,000 if you start late. Starting early is really, really important. If you can't save as much as you like, as much as you want, save something. Make sure you're using the 401k at work, use the tax advantages to your benefit, and feather your own financial nest early. Don't make silly fouls like ignoring this stuff in your 20s and 30s, because by the time you're 50, it takes a lot of pretty fast pedaling to make up for what you ignored early. Yeah, and uh, not only don't make the silly fouls, don't make too many of the fouls either. I mean, we can have a few mistakes along the way, uh, David, but we can't do it if there's uh, an overwhelming amount at some point because eventually you foul out. And uh, what, what you could have done, what could have been, as many March Madness teams feel each year, what could have been won't be, and uh, you won't be able to win the championship, so to speak. So there you go. And that's no good. No your, good. Your, no good. Your loved ones will really be bummed if you foul out of the financial game. Right, right. We want to make financial champions out of you. Any other comparisons you want to draw between basketball and retirement? Those were the big three that I could kind of uh, think of and figured you'd be able to riff on pretty good. Well, the only other one that I was thinking about was, that, so each team, there were 64, I guess technically there are 68 teams that made it. There's like 300 teams. That's a good point. So, yeah, more than 300. So, I think what is really important in the financial realm is to define your own success and do it realistically. So back to the basketball thing, maybe that particular team's goal is to have a winning record, or maybe it's to make it to the NIT. Or in my case, my Missouri Tigers, it would have been awesome if we'd have won one game in the NCAA because Gonzaga would have been our second game and we probably would have gotten our heads taken off. But that would have been a good goal for my Missouri Tigers. If you are... So in the financial realm, maybe success, maybe in your 30s and 40s, you would define success at retirement is, I'm going to have Social Security, I'm going to have my house paid for, and I'm going to have a half a million dollar IRA. And if that's your success, write it down, plan out the steps, and just get it done. Maybe your success is, well, I'm going to have a pension, I'm going to have Social Security, and I'm going to have a million dollar IRA that I am not going to need because my pension and Social Security are going to pay for everything else. Or maybe your financial goal is to avoid estate taxes due when you die because you're going to have more than 22 million between you and your spouse. So everybody's goal is different. The important thing from my standpoint is to make sure you have goals, that you set them early, that you're realistic about them, that you keep score. In this basketball game of life, keep score for yourself. And achieving those goals is going to bring a tremendous amount of satisfaction. And you're going to be more content with your financial life because you set the goals, you accomplish them, and that's going to make you feel super successful uh, and content with what you've got. I love it, David. Great comparisons today and lots of food for thought, things to think about and be aware of. And uh, got to talk a little basketball today, too, which is uh, <laughs> a little fun. Even though our teams didn't win at all, David, it was still uh, a fun march to follow and get interested in. So, we'll, Yeah, uh, they didn't win it all, and they didn't win at all. At all, either. <laughs> Both of our teams. Oh, well. But Both you know of what? our teams, There's early year. exits, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, we uh, we'll be. You know what they say? There's always next year, David. That's so, right. You know, we'll we'll be back at it. Uh, if you have any questions about your financial life and about retirement, David is there for you to have those conversations. 
It can start as simply as a phone call or uh, send us an email if you'd like as well. And if it needs to go into more in-depth conversation from there, can certainly do that with a complete planning review and an in-office visit or remote conversation. All you have to do is get uh, in touch by calling 913-317-1414. That's 913-317-1414. Or go online to CoverYourAssetsKC.com and contact us that way. CoverYourAssetsKC.com and you can get in touch. We'll put the contact info in the description of today's show so it's easy for you to find. David, thanks for the help, and uh, we'll look forward to another good conversation with you next week. We'll be talking about uh, inherited IRA changes. Should be a good conversation. Sounds awesome. I'll look forward to that. Yep. Uh, We'll be looking forward to it as well. Some good advice and guidance coming up next time right back here on Cover Your Assets, KC. Thanks for listening. Investment advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, LLC, BCM, a registered investment advisor. BCM and KC Financial Advisors are independent of each other.